All right, let's take a quick look at the histology of the GIT. So this is looking at the tissue and cellular structures as we move all the way through this alimentary canal. So basically, we can have a look at the generalized histology of this tissue. That means that there are some similar themes, looking at the histology, as we move down. And there's some variations on this theme depending on whether you're looking at the esophagus or the stomach or the small intestines and large intestines. There's some slight variations, but generally they look like what we're just about to talk about now. So, what you need to do is draw up six telescopic looking tubes for me. What do I mean? I'll draw up like this. So there's two tubes, three tubes, four tubes, five, six, and seven. See how it looks like a telescope being pulled out? These are the seven most common layers of the GIT, or the alimentary canal. Now, what we need to look at is, first of all, the one right in the middle here. This is the hollow lumen of the GIT. This is the hollow insides, which means that if we use our esophagus as an example, this is the hollow lumen or inside of the esophagus. Okay, so that's the tube that all the foodstuffs move through. So this is the most interior tube. So let's start here at the inter most interior aspect. Now, first thing is, we already know, go back to first principles, what is the tissue type that lines the outside of the inside of our body? It's epithelia. So this is going to be epithelial tissue. So we have epithelial tissue lining the insides of the alimentary canal. The next tissue layer, well, you always know that all epithelial tissue will sit on some very thin layer of connective tissue, which we call the lamina propria. The lamina propria. Now, the lamina propria, it's a bit of connective tissue. There's going to be some blood vessels that are associated in this particular area. To help feed the underlying tissue. The third layer here is a very thin layer of smooth muscle, which we call the muscularis mucosa. The muscularis mucosa. So we have a very thin layer of smooth muscle. So what I'm drawing here are smooth muscle cells. Now, these three layers, going from the epithelia to the lamina propria to the muscularis mucosa, these three layers are called the mucosal layer. They're the mucosal layer. Now the next layer, which is this one here, because it's sitting underneath the mucosa, it's recognized as the submucosa. Let's draw it out here. This layer is the submucosa. And this submucosa, again, is quite an extensive amount of uh, sorry, connective tissue as well. And this submucosa is going to have some gastric pits, not gastric pits, sorry. It's going to have glandular pits. And these glandular pits are going to secrete mucus and so forth. So the submucosa is sitting underneath the mucosal layer. That's the second most predominant layer. The third most predominant layer So we have epithelial, lamina propria, muscularis, mucosa. They all make up the mucosal layer. Then we have the submucosal layer that sits underneath that. And you can see that there's going to be some glandular pits that are present there. And they're going to have mucus secreting cells. 
The next layer we're going to have is a muscle layer and it's circular muscle. And the next layer is another muscle layer, layer and it's the longitudinal muscle. So we have two muscle layers here. Now, they're both smooth muscle, makes sense because it's the alimentary canal. We don't tell it to contract consciously, we tell it to contract unconsciously or involuntarily. And these two layers, one's circular muscle, one's longitudinal, what does that mean? Well, it means that the muscle cells are arranged in a circular pattern for this one, which means they're arranged like this around the tube. Right, so they're going around the tube like that. And the longitudinal layer goes along the length, hence being called the longitudinal layer. So why do we have a circular layer and a longitudinal layer? Well, this allows for both mixing and propulsion to occur throughout the alimentary canal. It can contract around the food and also push the foodstuffs through. These two layers, unsurprisingly, are called the muscle layer. And then the final layer is called the serosa, and that's this layer here. And this serosa again is connective tissue, and you're going to find in this serosa layer, you're going to have blood vessels, You're going to have nerve fibers and lymphatic tissue and so forth. And that's the most external layer. So, this is the serosal layer. So, there's four major layers of the GIT, which are broken up by these sub layers as well. First layer, the mucosal layer, made up of the epithelial cells of the inner aspect of the tube, so the, the lumen. Then you've got the lamina propria, which has some, it's basically a, a connective tissue membrane that the epithelial cells sit upon, and there's some blood vessels and lymphatic tissue and nerve fibers and so forth. We've got the muscularis layer, muscularis mucosa, very thin, smooth muscle layer that sits within this mucosal layer. Then you have the submucosa, in which there are some invaginations, and these are glandular crypts or pits, which can release mucus. Then we have two muscle layers. We've got the muscle layer, um, most internal, which is the circular, then longitudinal, both of which allow for mixing and propulsion of that foodstuffs. And then we have the serosal layer, which has blood vessels, nerve fibers, lymphatic tissue, and so forth. And this is on the most external aspect. Okay, so these are the major layers and histology of the GRT. Like I said, they change depending on where you look at. For example, in the stomach, you have one extra layer of muscle here called the oblique layer. We'll talk about that when we move through into the stomach.